Almost exactly 20 years ago, I first heard the call to be a priest when I started serving at Mass. I didn't know at the time that it was almost exactly 20 years ago when the Boston Globe first announced to the world the abuse crisis in the church. It was four years ago, almost, that I was ordained. It was about a month after that that we saw that the crisis was even worse than we thought. Now, in that time, I, and I'm sure many of you, have had multiple opportunities to consider what does this mean for our faith in the church? What is the church? How does she interact with us? How do we interact with her? And many times, we hear only what the media says, this voice of the world, which is an extension of Satan's voice, that tells us that the church is nothing more than a vile human institution that we should get rid of that she's stuck in the Dark Ages, and we've advanced beyond that. If we listen, however, to the right voice of God, we see something very different. That the Church has always been the spotless bride of Christ. And every time that we have to wrestle with something like these crises, we have to come back to that and think, what does it mean that we believe in a Church that is spotless because of Christ, yet fallen because of us. And once again, we have an opportunity to adjust our focus. We can, as the media would hope, as the world would tell us, focus only on the sin, focus only on those things which tear us down and tear us apart. But then we look at Judas instead of Jesus. We look at our sins instead of his grace, and we miss the picture entirely. If we look instead at the way our Lord speaks today, he does not care, really, what the world says about him or his church. He refers us instead to the Father. My Father, who has given them, us, his sheep, to him is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. It is from that unity that Christ draws the church to himself and makes her one with him. This is why the church is holy. This is why the church is spotless, because of Christ. His holiness is beyond any sin that we can commit. It can purge and purify and cleanse all of it. So on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we have again a chance to look at the church, fixing our eyes on Christ, who leads us to the Father. When we see the church in this way, yes, we see we make mistakes. We are sinners. But our focus, as St. Paul tells us, is to be fixed on Christ. Fix your eyes on Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father. In that way, our gaze, our hearts, our lives are always oriented to heaven. And yes, things will come against us. But as St. Peter found out, if we look at those things, we fall to them. If we look at Jesus, we can stand. The result of this is what we see in Acts of the Apostles. There will be persecution. Because the church, as the flock of Christ, as those who go against the current, is a sign of contradiction in this world. She is something that stands for, for absolute truth, for goodness, for beauty, in this world which prefers ugliness and chaos. And for this reason, St. Paul and St. Barnabas were persecuted by the people at the time. They didn't want to hear the good news of the gospel. They didn't want to hear this message of Jesus. And so they tried to kill Paul and his, his, uh, his co-workers. The same can happen to us. We know that throughout the church this very day, some churches are being attacked because of our stance on life, because of our stance on marriage, because of our understanding, the biblical understanding of the truth. My brothers and sisters suffer for it, but it is good that we do because in that suffering, we are united to the cross of Christ. Because of that, we see not only our broken humanity, but Christ coming to heal it. We see not just our sin, but his redemption. We are united to him, so that hopefully one day, what we see in the second reading can be ours. And we will be part of that great multitude which no one can count from every place and time, worshiping the Father in white garments of purity, goodness. 
the result of persecution in this life is blessedness in the next. And so it is our duty to love the church, to understand that she leads us to Christ because she cannot be separated from him. We know that today is Mother's Day, and it is a good opportunity to reflect that the church is our mother and teacher. The things that she gives to us are for our edification, for our salvation, for our sanctification, so that day by day we can become more like Christ. It is only because of him who comes to us through the church that we can withstand the terrible storms of this life. Praise be God that he left us a way to do that. So this week I ask you to pray for the church. She is in an agony at this time. In many ways, both inside and out, she suffers and struggles. But she continues because she is Christ's, and none can take her from his hand. So pray for the church every day this week, for the Pope, the bishops, the priests, for us, for all of us that we can be this multitude we can withstand the persecutions of this life and one day be part of that glorious, triumphant church in heaven. Thank the Lord for the church, as in the church, Christ comes to us today.